Hi there, hope you're having a great day so far. You know, in life, I'm a big believer of the saying, in the moments of our greatest challenge, we achieve our greatest success. Now, what does that mean, Rach? Well, I actually see that during the times in our life that we are encountering our greatest struggles or hardship, we actually grow. You know, as hard as it is to see, see it at that moment, um, we inev inevitably go through personal growth and development. Um, and the reason we grow is that we have to be able to acquire new skills in life that we hadn't ever needed before, but to be able to get us through the situation to get us to the other side. With everything that's going on at the moment, we may actually feel that we don't have any control um, over what's happening at the moment. And today's chat with our, our very special guest is going to be able to give us some, some, some um, tips and advice to obtain um, some structure in our life to be able to help us come out the other end. You know, definitely life at the moment is out of whack at the moment and, um, is, and is definitely out of sync. The three main things that we um, can actually sort of help bring some control back into our life are our emotions, our diet and our sleep. And uh, to be able to help us find control of these, these three things is our special guest, Anna Block. Now, Anna Block is a nutrition practitioner and coach and founder of Anna Block International. Now, she's, um, she, her work focuses on creating healthy habits around managing stress based on neuroscience, um, coaching and a, uh, like a psychology uh, approach, if I can get my words out. <laughs> now, she actually believes that actively boosting happiness, positivity and managing emotional stress are an essential part of re uh, resolving the bad stress and helping us bo uh, boost our immune system. And we're really grateful for your time today. How are you doing? Good. Hi, Rach. Thanks so much for connecting with me. Awesome. Now, we published your article titled Resolving Stress Around Coronavirus. For someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just what inspired you to write it? Yeah, definitely. So as a parent, you want to do everything that you can for your family um, to protect them uh, and yourself against the risk of coronavirus. And I guess in this challenging time, it can be really stressful when your regular routine is thrown out of sync. Um, you've got the kids, you know, home, homeschooling, and there's a lot of uncertainty in the air. Um, but I guess that through my own work and experience and practice, I have identified a few areas that we can focus on during this time where, and, and the three areas being um, managing your emotions, um, your diet and your sleep. So you can start to get a, a greater sense of control um, and be able to promote a greater sense of calm and a more relaxed household during coronavirus. Yeah. Now, um, with your experience, what have you found has actually worked with your clients and families during uncertain times? Is there any particular strategies that you've applied in the past um, pre-coronavirus has actually worked that you're all applying now? Yeah, definitely. And it's a great question. Um, I think the first thing is definitely looking at your emotional state. So when you're stressed, um, you might feel a lot of physical sensations. So, you know, that sick feeling in your tummy or when you get butterflies or you might feel, you know, angry or tense or really snappy with the kids. And all of those uh, symptoms are caused by both your conscious and your unconscious um, triggers to stress. And what I do with a lot of my clients is by identifying those stress triggers, which are actually the majority of your thoughts. So your unconscious thoughts make up 95% of the thoughts that you have. So when you start to examine them and identify them, you're actually able to start resolving stress for good. So in the coaching process, that's actually what we explore and look at the types of strategies that will work for you um, and are really easy to implement. So things like, for example, um, mindset work or using the breath. Um, and one powerful way that I use it in my own coaching practice and something that um, 
that, that you could experiment yourself is actually diaphragm breathing. So focusing on the breath, um, it's a really powerful evidence-based tool to lower stress and anxiety, um, especially in these uncertain times. So diaphragm breathing engages the part of your nervous system that rules your digestion. So your parasympathetic um, rest and digest um, system and helps to downregulate your fight or flight um, stress response. And that in turn will influence things like how your body then utilizes the food that you eat so it can support a healthy gut. Um, it means you'll, you'll lower your perception of stress um, and you'll also have a stronger immune system to actually be a lot more in a better position to fight things, viruses like coronavirus. Um, and other ways that can support you feeling a lot more calm and managing the, those emotions and feeling more relaxed and positive um, can take the form in, you know, for example, meditation, um, deep breathing, um, and, you know, carving out time to do things that you love as a family. And look, you can experiment with um, a practice or an activity that resonates with you and your family um, and see which one works best. Um, the key though is to create a habit out of it. So it integrates into your, into your and your family's routine as a way to approach this challenging time um, and be a lot more better equipped to manage stress effectively. Okay, so it's about finding the breathing techniques um, overall that works. There's so many different breathing techniques out there. It's a matter, matter of just finding which one works best for, for the parent and for the family to help them manage their emotions. Is that, is that the key point you think with managing our emotions is just finding ways to reduce that anxiety and the stress is to, to just to, to breathe and, and to, to calm, calm ourselves down? Yeah, so look, breath is definitely one of of the aspects that I found in my own experience and with my clients that works well to tap into the physiological side of the stress response. So, you know, the fight or flight yep. um, and down relate that. Um, but there are definitely a lot of ways to actually do that. So, um, you know, the, the key though is, I guess, finding a practice and a habit that you can actually integrate into your day-to-day -day routine. So you can get a lot more um, benefit out of it. So you can uh, lower your perception of stress. Yeah. And mindfulness is a really, really great technique too. And mindfulness is just being in the moment, irrespective of what's happening around us. And I'm a, I'm a big Oprah Winfrey fan and her mindfulness technique, I've heard her say many times when she has a morning cup of tea and she just has that moment when she's just stirring um, the tea and just, you know, has that moment of actually there's nothing else happening. Um, so it's a matter of just to manage our emotions, find either a breathing technique or a mindfulness technique to help so that you can actually create a routine and do that on a daily basis. Is, is, that, is that what you're saying? Exactly. Just so that it integrates into your routine as a way to approach this, you know, uncertain, challenging time. So yep. you're more better equipped to manage stress effectively. Yep. Um, and I find it really, really fascinating um, in our bodies how our mind and our stomach is actually connected. Now, you've mentioned two other really key, uh, two other points, um, being our, our diet and our sleep. Um, so, is there any other health aspect that we should be concentrating on um, that can sort of help influence our perception of health at the moment? Yeah, definitely. So I think the the second biggest thing is resolving a lot of underlying stress with the food that we eat. So scientists have confirmed that what we eat is directly correlated to our mood and our perception of stress. Mm -hmm. So so, um, and that's because of the gut brain connection. So there is a connection between stress um, and what you eat. And that gut brain connection is, I guess, a two way highway between your nervous system and your endocrine system. So what you choose to eat on a day-to-day -day basis during this time will actually influence your mood, um, which in turn has an effect on how calm or motivated or in control that you actually feel. So 
it's natural to crave sugary or fatty, um, high energy foods when you're stressed or tired. So I'm talking like, you know, your chocolate, your sugary drinks, um, stimulating wines, your quarantinis, or any sort of like high fat foods. And it's really hard to say no when you're in that stressed state. So, but what's happening is by eating sugar and processed foods, um, it'll actually signal to your brain that you're stressed. Um, and in turn, that will actually influence the exact emotions that you'll feel. So that's why I guess choosing or the food that you do choose to eat is crucial, not just physically, but also for your mental health. Yeah. Um and that being said also, how does that affect our sleep? Yeah, so sleep, I guess, is probably the other and probably the most influential factor when it comes to managing your stress levels. So when you're not getting enough sleep, um, your hormones will just be all out of whack, um, especially the stress hormone cortisol. So when your cortisol levels are elevated, the function of your nervous system is, is going to be impaired and you're going to feel a lot more agitated. You're going to be a lot snappier with the kids. Um, you're going to have a lot less willpower and motivation to keep consistent with the other you know, positive lifestyle factors that you might be trying to implement into your day-to-day -day that will promote you feeling a lot more calm and in control. And I guess getting into a positive sleep routine is an essential habit, um, but you know, slowly creating boundaries around your bedtime um, and the amount of sleep you get are a, a, a crucial element. So, you know, it could be strategies around things like um, limiting blue lights um, or the kids' electronics after dinner. Um, it could also mean things like putting your phone on airplane mode just before bed until the next morning or until you're ready the following day. Um, and that way you're lowering stress, you're getting a deep, restful night's sleep. And I guess the bottom line is by creating healthy habits and behaviors that will support both your physical but also your mental health, you're kind of more able to lower your perception of stress during these times um, and develop a lot more positivity and resilience. Yes. So, I mean, so we've spoken about emotions, we've spoken about the, the mindfulness and the breathing techniques, we've spoken about from our diet, the reasons why we should not be eating all of the bad foods because it's not just about just that moment. It, it does sort of create a bit of a negative spiral. And on the, the flip side of that, with a, a, a healthy diet, that is going to do the opposite. Um, and the third part is the whole reasons um, why we need um, to be able to get ourselves into a positive sleep pattern, um, as you've just suggested, with the lights and no technology um, before bed and all those things as well but is there anything else you would be suggesting for our families at this time that they should be focusing on so i think at this point in time it's really about focusing on and prioritizing our health now that we have a little bit more time to do that most of us are working from home it's a really good opportunity to develop a routine and um, a lifestyle that factors in the pillars and of great health so resolving stress doing some mindset or breath work as well as focusing on things like um, food um, and and managing energy exercise so you can really start to create a life that you love yes and as as we're saying at the very start too i mean what we're encountering now is unprecedented we've heard that saying a million times but it's what we do with this time and how we grow through it to get through the other end and that's what i was saying at the start what we do um is going to enable us to grow so what what are the things as a question we're putting out to the families that you're going to do you know as a family what are you going to do what are you going to do for yourselves for your children out of all of these these um points that we've just discussed that's going to help you navigate your way through this tunnel to 
to get through to the other end and and not just to adapt these health, healthy um, lifestyle techniques just for now but for the future um, and all of these points that Anna um, has shared with us today we're, we're so grateful for um, now if parents have got any other questions uh, where, whereabouts can they find you The best place would be over on my website, so annablock.com.au. Um, that's probably the best place to go. All right, wonderful. We'll have a link through to your article um, and, and all the links like through to your, to your website, etc. And we really look forward to an, another chat in the future. And once again, thanks, thanks again for your time. Take care. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.